Well, hello there, Tankers of the Blitz universe. I'm Flossie, and today I will be reviewing the WZ-121. Now, this is a tank that uh, someone actually reminded me I should do a review on, uh, on my stream chat today, in fact. So, here we are, and uh, before I get into how to play this tank, I will go over the tank's stats here. Now, let me move my camera. There we go. All right. <clears throat> breaking into the tank stats and starting off with the gun this tank's gun deals 420 damage on its standard shells 370 on the premium and 500 on the he so the alpha damage on this tank is very very beefy indeed in terms of the pen this tank has 257 standard pen uh, 319 premium pen and 75 pen on the he so overall pretty average pen for a tier 10 medium and uh, yeah, nothing much to say about that. Now, in terms of the gun's accuracy, the aim time is 2.2 seconds and the dispersion is 0.335. So that that aim time is absolutely insane. 2.2 <clears throat> seconds is it's, it's ridiculous, man. You're aiming in so, so quickly. However, the dispersion of 0.335 is not the best. Um, tanks like obviously the 62A or a lot of other mediums are just going to be more accurate than this thing, but because it has higher alpha damage, it kind of makes sense that it's a bit less accurate. However, that aim time is, is just so nice. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the gun depression, this tank has six degrees of gun depression and, uh, that's okay. Uh, you will struggle sometimes to actually get your gun down enough on certain maps to, uh, to hit your opponents, but for the most part, it's workable. In terms of the tank's mobility, this tank goes 56 forward and 20 in reverse, which is very, very nice for a medium, especially that reverse speed. It just means that you're going to be able to back up so very quickly uh, if you do need to. So excellent um, overall speed there, and its power to weight of 19.2 is okay. Uh, not the best, so you do have to watch out if you're trying to run away from someone. You have to give yourself enough time to get up to your top speed. And the uh, hull traverse rate is absolutely insane. 72 degrees. This tank is ridiculous on its traverse speed. Um, yeah. So anyways, that's the overall tank's stats. And uh, now before I do break into the armor profile, I do want to go over one thing. This tank has tungsten shells, which is one of the main unique characteristics of this vehicle. And it means you're going to be doing a crap ton of damage. And... Uh, yeah, honestly, I love tungsten shells on this tank. I think it's really, really crazy uh, when you're just able to slap your opponents and out-trade pretty much any other medium you want to. And uh, personally, I pair it with adrenaline. I know some people don't like using two, um, two of these consumables and then only one repair kit. Some people like running double repair kit on this tank. But I personally am fine with just one repair kit. It just means you have to be careful not to get tracked in the open. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So let's break into the tank's armor profile right now here. And you can see I am using an E50M uh, up against this tank with uh, calibrated shells equipped because I feel like it's just a fair comparison. And uh, you can see here on flat ground, E50M is using standard ammo and it's able to go right through the upper plate. However, this tank's upper plate is extremely troll and it's very easy to make it red if you just angle it slightly. Um, or if you are slightly above your opponents using the gun depression. It's very, very easy to get bounces in this tank. Um, especially when you're only showing the turret. You can see the turret's very, very strong here. A lot of it's either auto bounce zones or it's upwards of like 380. The weakest spot is 250 here on the cheeks. But overall, the turret is very, very nice. And if you do move the tank back and forth, it's going to be very difficult for people to hit these weak spots here. You can see here, loading heat shells makes these cheek weak spots larger. However, they're still very, very troll to hit depending on the tank you're in uh, when you're facing up against one of these tanks. And you can see here, although the upper plate and lower plate are just completely green, as you can see, uh, there are still certain angles like this that will get bounces. So it, again, it's still a troll tank. And if you angle it and wiggle it around enough, uh, you can get bounces in it. So I would say overall the armor is pretty reliable, but you do have to be careful of your upper and lower plate there because they are pens if people are loading premium. In terms of the side armor, it's only 83 thick, so people will be able to spam uh, HE at your sides uh, above the track if they can get to you your side, which is going to be difficult considering how fast your traverse speed is. And if they get to your rear, then you're kind of done -zo. Only 65 millimeters and 61 on the turret means that basically any tier 10 and a lot of tier 9s are going to be able to HE you anywhere on that uh, on the rear of the turret and the rear of your hull. So there you go. 
that's the armor profile of this tank now let's get into some gameplay after i move my camera back there we go all right, so playing this tank. Well, it's a pretty standard medium tank playstyle. You want to stick with your other mediums, and uh, you basically want to just deal your tungsten damage to any enemy mediums that you face. Um, in terms of like medium playstyle, I suggest you stick to going medium side on most maps, and if you don't know where that is, then uh, chances are your teammates will go the right direction. However, you sometimes will have the odd teammates that just go the wrong direction, like this pattern here. But what I don't recommend is don't go by yourself. Um, stick with your team, even if they do go the wrong direction. I see a lot of medium tank players who are just um, extremely like stubborn, and they will still just go medium flank, even if their team isn't. And it depends on the enemy team's lineup, but sometimes that just doesn't work. Because you can see here, if I was to do that, I would be facing up against a T-62 and a 121B, as well as probably a Chieftain Mark VI, and, I mean, honestly, the majority of their team is probably over there. Oh, what in the world? Yeah, I guess they're not. But, um, yeah, I, I would not suggest going alone, even if you are technically a medium, um, just because you can get nuked really quick if you do do that. So... What I see here is a 183 that I don't really want to get shot at by, uh, but <clears throat> I can use this dirt pile here, and we should be able to get a shell into the 183, and there we go, he misses us because we were able to use that dirt pile to back up quickly. And you can see there, their 183 is in a pretty bad spot right now. And uh, I basically, I just want to get him killed as quickly as I can. You can see the alpha on this tank is fantastic. It's one of the main things you really want to utilize to your advantage. You want to make sure you're out trading with opponents as much as you can. And that aim time is also really, really nice. You can see, even though the dispersion isn't technically the best, that aim time is fantastic. And the armor profile, as you can see here, it's also very nice. And look at that tungsten. We hit him for 480 damage easily. Uh, and he's already dead. Insane stuff right there. Now, so far we're doing okay. I don't know what our Badger is doing. Bro is using speed boost to turn. Um, very interesting right there. <clears throat> Sorry about my throat. I just finished eating dinner, so oh well. Anyways, we're going to get this uh, tungsten shell into the 121 there, and we do light him on fire and kill him. So that's very nice indeed. And it looks like the rest of their team is just going to sit here. You can see where the gun depression is a little bit mid on this tank. Uh, like we aren't really able to hit that BZ unless we fully poke over, which I might as well do because I am full HP. We do roll a bit uh, a bit high there for 426. So that's solid right there. And let's get another shell in. Again, you can see the aim time is absolutely insane. But the second you move your tank, the on movement dispersion is really, really bad on this thing. So look at how much it blooms when you're driving around. Like that's really bad. So in order to get your full accuracy, you have to stop moving and you have to fully aim in to actually get your shots out. If you're just moving and trying to shoot at the same time, chances are you're not going to hit anything. But you can see there, the aim time is so good, you're able to just snap shells into your opponents. It's really, really nice. And uh, I absolutely love this tank's gun. Definitely up there with the strongest mediums in the entire game. Uh, just because you have that insane alpha damage that really scares your opponents, as well as the great DPM of this tank. This tank has about 20 or 3,100 DPM, sorry, uh, or 3,200, I can't remember which, while using calibrated shells. And uh, unfortunately, we do die, but we're able to get out 4,100 damage in our first battle, which is absolutely amazing. And I think that's a pretty good showcase of how to play this tank. You want to stick with your team, and you want to farm off of... Uh, enemy tanks mistakes the second you see someone shoot poke them and get your shells in there you go 4100 damage as i said uh, very solid first game we were able to pick up three kills as well and we do get a first class there we go very nice indeed and let me just check on the um dpm because for whatever reason i didn't say it. yeah it's about 3200 there you go and i am using calibrated shells so pretty solid dpm and uh, if you can get that dpm working to your advantage especially with having high alpha damage it's really really nice so, let's get into game number two on Middleburg, and this is another good map for this tank. Um, hopefully the team does go up. Um, I would rather not go town in this tank, but since this tank doesn't have much gun depression to begin with, it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't really matter where you go. The hull armor on this tank is strong enough to where you don't necessarily have to go to a hull down spot, but we'll see what the team does. I'm gonna, oh, I don't know why, I just, what? I did not mean to say that. I meant to say help. There we go. But... 
from what it seems, it seems our team is going down. Now, looking at their enemy team lineup, I am the only medium in this entire game, which is extremely good. Uh, it means that the majority of their team will probably be going down anyways, so I might as well cap C base here, and we'll get up on base cap quite quickly here. So the only thing I'm worried about is one of their tanks probably will have spawned up top here, so I do have to make sure that I'm keeping my eyes open for any potential singular tank up here. And they actually did send two tanks up here, which is, uh, that's not great. The Hori and a BZ-58 uh, is, uh, is not exactly what I want to see. Actually, it's a BZ-68. My bad. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run because I don't want to get shot at by their entire enemy team. I'm probably going to take one from this KPZ. Ooh, we do get really lucky, and he does, in fact, bounce us. So now we do have, basically, I'm actually surprised by this right now. A lot of their team is, in fact, going over this way. And that's not very good for me, because, yeah, I'm going to get absolutely deleted by a lot of these tanks here. You know, I was expecting a lot of their team to, I don't know, not go up, but apparently they did. And uh, now I'm basically screwed. But, but, our team is going to win this, simply because... Their team is so distracted on me right now that, uh, yeah, sometimes you can't really have crazy farming damage battles. Sometimes it's more a chance to uh, just hold in your tank and let the the rest of your team deal with the enemy players on the other side of the map. So this is one of those instances. I'm not going to do much damage this game, but there's not a whole lot I can do about that. Uh, simply because, well, obviously their team decided to push up. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a good example of why you don't want to go by yourself. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Kind of a crappy game. But we should be able to win. And I guess I'll cut to the end here when we do get the win out. And we do get the win. So, I mean, that was just a kind of an unfortunate situation. It wasn't the tank's fault. And it honestly wasn't really my fault either. I was not expecting, like, any of their team to go up there. I, well, I was expecting at least, like, one tank to go up there. But I didn't expect three tanks, like, four tanks to be sitting around that area. So, yeah, we kind of got destroyed, but I will, uh, I'll leave the game in there because, I mean, what are you going to do? It happens sometimes, and at least we, since we did distract their team, we did actually come out with a victory because of how many players on the enemy team were actually out of the fight there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what happens. Sometimes you'll get the odd game where, uh... Not a whole lot you can do. And the 1-2-1, it, again, it has good mobility, but it's not like a light tank's mobility. If I was in a light tank there, I would have been able to get off of that hill a lot faster. And I probably would have survived. But because I couldn't, uh, I had to sort of move myself back into my spawn area and uh, kind of just distract the enemies as long as I could. So yeah, not a great game there, but let's finish off on a strong win. Let's get a lot of damage out this game to make up for the last one. So we're on Mayan Ruins. And uh, I will be making my way towards mid here. I'm expecting a lot of their team to be going mid and to the left here because, of course, they do have a 1 2 1 on their team. A M48 Patton, a BZ, 114 SP2. So, yeah, a lot of these tanks I would not be surprised uh, if I saw them in mid. And you can see there, there's their 114 SP2. And I'm going to get a quick shell into his turret, <clears throat> seeing as he is not looking at me. So, there we go. One shell into him. And uh, let's see if I can get another one into him with my heat shells. Unfortunately, I back up too soon and it hits the rock. Oh, well. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to try and get another shell into his turret. There we go. We hit his angled turret side there. That's very good for us. So two shells so far into that 114. Um, yeah, so we're doing, too, we're doing pretty good right now. Uh, not a whole lot is going on, except for the fact that their team is not going over here. So I'm going to get a shell into this 1-2-1 one, one here, and uh, hopefully he can't hit me back. He doesn't. He misses, and that's good for us. So right now, we're in a good spot. This 1-2-1 one, one is... Uh, I don't know what he's doing. He, he's probably lagging, because he's driving in circles. So uh, that's unfortunate for him. But I'll pop my tungsten. Might as well get a nice max roll, 525 max roll into his tank. And let's see if I might as well... I can just finish him off. Okay, well... That was kind of a free kill, uh, not much else to say about that. Bro was driving in circles, and he was definitely having Wi-Fi problems, so... Oh well, that sucks. Let's get a... Wow, that was unlucky. Ricochet on the M48. Hopefully he runs away from my teammates, so I can get another one in before he does die. There we go, five... or not 500, 410 roll into his side there. And just like that, we're already at 3,000 damage. So, unfortunately, there's only two enemies left, so this is kind of just a steamroll game. 
Not much I can do about that. Uh, I don't know if I can even get any more damage out this game. Hopefully that 183 doesn't just YOLO himself into the open, because I would like to get at least another shell out to break the 3k damage mark, but we'll see what happens. I have a feeling their 183 is going to be right around this corner here. So I will make my way towards where I think he is, and there he is. There's the 183. Let's put a tracking shell into him. And let's uh, ram him for 278, and hopefully I can get another one out before he does die. Unfortunately, I can't. But that was a solid uh, third and final game for this tank. <clears throat> so you can see, it's not hard to do well in this tank, but in situations like that second battle, um, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate when you are expecting the enemy team to do one thing, and they do the complete opposite. Um... Yeah, I technically could have waited around to spot them out a bit safer, but again, I wasn't expecting that. However, we did well this third and final game, so I will take it. And overall, the 1-2-1 one -one is a fantastic medium, definitely the king of tungsten shells. Um, I love the fact that this tank has tungsten. Do I think it needs it? No. I think the tank would be perfectly fine without tungsten, but the fact that ha it has it makes it that much more fun. Anyways, for any of you out there who are not yet subscribed to my channel, I highly recommend you do so as it's a fantastic way to support the content I make as well as stay up to date when I post a video almost daily. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.